you will please, uh, let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Would you stand please? We have a word of prayer. Thank you all for being here tonight. We're just praising the Lord and thanking God we can be here, you know. Father, tonight we just give you the honor and the glory and the praise for all that you've done for us. We thank you for your son, Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for what he means in our hearts and our lives. We're so grateful to you. Thank you, Lord, we can still gather together without persecution. Thank you, we can still come to time and we can still have private prayer. We can still do some things, but we know that our freedoms are rapidly disappearing. And we pray right now you'll give all the people, and us especially, a chance that we might again revive our Constitution. Reviving our Constitution, we might revive our country, especially to the leadership of it, change the direction of the country, where once again we'll be prosperous and we can help everybody. And truly the American dream will be available. Forgive us of our sins and lead us in our study tonight. For we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me, please, as we do the Pledge of Allegiance? I'm sorry, I'd mean for you to sit down. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation now under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, please remain standing. I wish that our judge from uh, Hunt County would be with us here tonight. I would have him issue the oath. Chad, I'm getting feedback now. What did I do wrong? Okay. That's, maybe I bent my head down too close. Let me, how's that right there? Is that, is that better? Okay. The oath is uh, from Oath Keepers. How many of y'all are familiar with Oath Keepers? Good, 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 good. Uh, these are a group of servicemen who said, we gave the oath to protect our country, and we fought for it, and we think everybody should continue. And so, uh, if you will take this oath tonight, put your name in, and it says I, and then add your name. So I, and I put my name, John Cooper. Just solemnly swear our firm. That I will support and defend. Constitution of the United States of America. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Pledging my life, my fortune, and my sacred honor. So help me God. I think that is really good, don't y'all? Remain standing for just one more moment, if you will, please. See if we can get this going. Oh, oh Chad, I did it. I went the wrong way, y'all. Excuse me. See if I can turn. Yeah, oh, come on here now, y'all. Give me a second. Okay, you may be seated. I'm going to give you John's five basics, okay? And I'm going to try not to get too much noise. I'll try to find my niche up here where that I don't uh, create too much, like, too much background to feed noise. And here's my five basics, and I'm going to do this all the time because, first of all, I must realize, and so should you, that God is God. Whether you like him or don't like him, whether you believe him or you don't believe him, doesn't make any difference. God is still God. 
The second thing that I come to realize is that we're all going to die. Sooner or later, every last one of us is going to die. Even our president's going to die one of these days. He may think he's immortal. The way he's acting, you're not too sure. But even we're all going to die. And then after that, we're all going to give account of our lives. See, with free will comes responsibility. With free will comes a, a accountability. And so we're all going to be accountable for our lives. And then we look at the Bible and we're commanded to obey the laws of the land. Well, the Bible gives us the basic law of serving the Lord Jesus Christ. The Constitution gives us the law of the land. And so then we stand before God, so we must defend the Constitution just like we defend the Bible. Without our Constitution and the freedom we have in it based on the Bible, then we don't have anything. Except we'll be back in slavery if we're not careful. And our younger generation, they really don't realize it. And so I was talking to a young lady tonight, and I said, Hun, I'm really sorry, but we're going to leave you and all of you people, your generation, all of these debts that we're accumulating right now. Well, she wasn't too impressed with it, you know. Five years from now, when she gets out of college and gets out of school and starts going to work, trying to make a living, it'll come through, don't y'all think? Anyway, so we are, we are, we've got to defend the Constitution. And today we're at a point where we need a revival. I think we get a revival of the Constitution, we get a revival of, of our relationship to God again, because we're probably not going to get much success unless we repent in Second Chronicles 7, 14. Unless we repent, come to the Lord, ask Him to forgive us, and God will heal our land and put us back again where we, where we used to be. Well, that's my five basics that I always like to go over. Now, here's another thing too. Our elected officials, uh, Rick Green calls them public servants. Our public servants, if they do not know the Constitution, how can they go to Washington and represent us? Obviously, right now, in Congress, they do not know the Constitution. They read it, but they do not know it. Why do, they not, why do we know they don't know it? They're not practicing it, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? So, yeah, really is. And CC, tonight, just a second, I want you to tell, I want you to tell about the the uh, Citizens uh, Group for Sovereignty. You want to take, come take, to, to get a microphone for us, Shad. Yeah, tell us just a little bit about that because we met here the other night. Right. Okay, thank you, John. Yeah, I'm Cece Parker, and I'm a promoter for the Texas Citizens Convention for Sovereignty. Uh, and what that is is just a citizens group, the citizens of Texas uh, are resisting un unconstitutional mandates coming from our state. This is a state... Uh, offensive, not not national, and um, very you know that that that's what it is in a nutshell. Is that we are grouping here uh, by the house districts throughout Texas to elect delegates to go to the convention to address uh, all the grievances that we're being blitzed with. I mean, I take all night long to go list. Mm -hmm. It's growing every day, but. Um, so that's basically what it is. So uh, watch for it. Um, our website is tccfs.com, and you can go there and uh, sign up, and you will be uh, uh, told when our next meetings are. Where's so the thank next you. meeting at? Well, we're going to have a leaders meeting this Saturday in Dallas. Uh, it's with all of the Northeast Texas Central um, leaders of, of Tea Party people. So this is going to be a real big deal for us because we're going to get our message out to all those people. So that's good. Thank you. Thank you, CC. So there's a lot of groups already responding. And I think that there are little groups of people all over our country right now that are just like we are. They're unhappy. We're waiting for the 2012 election. And we're going to we're going to see them come out of the woodwork to vote. And I hope they do. And if they don't, we're dead. Now, okay, so we must know the Constitution. Now, here's, here's what I'm going to campaign on. Y'all know I'm campaigning for the United States House of Representatives. I go to Washington. There's one thing, I'm not for sale. See, when I get up there, it's no matter what they say, I, I'm not for sale because I know what's going on in our country. I know where our people are at, and I know where our small businesses are. I'm a small businessman, and I'm there also. So I know what that's all about. So what I'm going to say is this all through the campaign. If you don't know the Constitution, you're not a proper candidate. And I'm going to say that. And I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to believe that. And if I don't know the Constitution, I'm not a proper candidate. 
But by the time I start doing it, I'll want to know the Constitution pretty good, okay? <laughs> so, so how do we know our constitutional rights have been taken away from us? That's right. See, see, you've got it. And we don't know enough about it. You and I know a few things, don't we? We all know a few things. We know a few things about the Constitution, but we don't know enough about it to really defend it, do we? If we, if a congressman come up to you and said, they, we now have the right to, to uh, take away your freedom and put you in jail when we get ready, uh, you're not going to know any different unless you know the Constitution. And uh, they think maybe they might have those rights. So, so we're not studying China's Constitution tonight. Whose Constitution are we studying? Let's, let's get personal. It's my Constitution. Is it your Constitution? Is it your Constitution? That's right, it is yours. It's yours and yours and yours and yours and mine. It is a personal thing. And I, I don't mind telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, it could be very scary what can happen to us if we do not get our country back in touch with our Constitution. They can run over us like you like big time. So it's not ours, it's not, it's not mine, it's all of us's, but it's really my Constitution. It's really your constitution and yours and yours and yours and yours. And think about it for a second. This is where you get all the freedoms that you need to live by. This is where you get all the freedoms that you do have. And this is where you don't get some of the freedoms that's been taken away from us. It's a personal thing. They took them away from me. They took them away from you. Don't you resent that you can't pray? Don't you resent that the VA has taken prayer out of the, of the uh, VA hospital, the VA's down there and funerals? And Cece just told me a minute ago, what was the last thing you heard, Cece? I heard it on the line. Was, was a friend of yours. Yeah, Dan uh, Flynn. I said, I said wait, 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 wait. Okay, let's get it. Okay, Dan, tell about Dan Flynn. Yeah, Dan Flynn was on the Mark Davis show this morning. He's the state representative for the Hunt County, Van Zant, and uh, uh, Raines County. And he did not stand up strong enough. Uh, he said, oh, it was terrible. His son, Dan's son, sings at a lot of the VA funerals. And he usually sings a patriotic song and a religious song. There is a, a minister who, who, who oversees a lot of the, uh, um, so the funeral ceremonies at the VA uh, cemetery. And he said that uh, the um, overseer, the, the VA, came to him and said that they needed to see his prayer, what he was going to say. So he submitted the prayer to them in writing, and they edited out all the things that referred to Jesus and to God. This happened. This is true. This happened just this past week. Okay. All yes, all veteran cemeteries. Um, and uh, the Mark Davis asked Dan Flynn if he felt like this lady should be fired, and Dan Flynn said, "No, it's terrible, but I don't want her fired." Yes, she needs to be fired, and she needs to be tried for treason. We are supposed to have the right to freedom of religion. I'm going to hand it back to John, and we can learn what our rights are. <laughs> right. Thank you, Cece. And she's right. And they're doing it blatantly in front of us, and they're not making any apologies for taking prayer out of the cemeteries. And... This is, a, this is really a hit on all the baby boomers because baby boomers are now coming up. As you well know, uh, the Congress is looking at a massive amount of money paying out to the baby boomers when they retire. And so how do you keep from paying them out? Well, if they're not there, you don't have to worry about it. So you enact uh, things like these death uh, things, you know, and, and, uh, and Obamacare and stuff like that. And uh, it, it's terrible. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm going to do this. The Lord lets me go to Congress, to Washington. I'm going to bring a resolution that you must have eight hours of CEUs to be in Congress. If you don't have them, you can't be seated. Did y'all say amen? amen. CEUs is continuing education okay. on the Constitution. If they don't know the Constitution, you can't defend it. So when they get there, they need to be taught, they need to have a class and be taught what the Constitution is all about the correct talk, teaching of the Constitution. So I'm, I'm going to do that. And I think it'll fly. And then uh, we're going to talk about the law. We're going to talk about judges, things like that. Uh, every one of these guys already have term limits. There's no re reason for all these guys to get into office and stay there all these years. 